Oscar Brown here. I'm very excited. And I'm excited about two things in this exciting episode. One is we've got a building consent. That's amazing. We'll talk about that later. Number two, we have a ducted heat pump system that we've been using for a month now and I love it with all my heart. Now today's exciting episode is a detailed explanation about how we insulate an exterior wall. But first I just want to get excited about this. So the sun is shining for a change today, so the room's actually 23 degrees. But we've had temperatures of minus one at the lowest, and we've been able to get the house to 20 degrees. It has ducts that operate around the whole house. There's five in total, two in the living room, and one in each bedroom. Now all of this could just be seen as wasteful if you have a hollow house like Jess and I. When I say hollow, I mean the walls are empty, there's no insulation in them. The insulation in the ceiling is laughable. The insulation in the floor is a joke. So now that we've spent all this money on a heat pump, we need to make the house hold the heat that it generates. In today's exciting episode, we're gonna start by insulating an exterior wall. All right, so a couple of episodes back, we made this a double glazed window, so that's gonna help a lot. We still need a seal around the window and put some rubber seals between the window sashes and the window frame, but this is another episode. The window is only gonna do so much if the wall looks like this. But the tricky thing is, this kind of works. Like, for years, for 70 years or however old this house is, there was plasterboard here, there was an open space, and then there was these bevel back weatherboards. And that kind of works because you do get moisture into the cavity of a wall space, whether it's from the outside or from the inside, and then it has this air space to dry out. So we need to maintain that gap. Blue strap. Now with this blue strap, we're gonna put it at the back here to stop the insulation being pushed against the cladding. So what we're going for here is we're going for like a 20 mil air gap at the back where the weatherboards are. These nogs don't go all the way to the weatherboards, so I'm gonna feed this behind, staple the top and bottom. There you go. Now down the bottom here, we have a nog put in place for the plasterboard and then it's got a gap behind it. The bottom plate goes out there as well. Putting this here should stop the water from just sitting on the flat bottom plate. Should roll out towards the weatherboards. Maybe the weatherboards soak up a bit of moisture, but because there's an air space, they can dry out. This stuff isn't completely waterproof, and that's on purpose. It's made to breathe. It's made to allow moisture to go out, but stop moisture coming in. So you gotta make sure that the print is facing out. We don't want any of that timber contacting the insulation. This seems to work for me, where I get in the corner and I kind of fold it on itself. Again, you don't wanna go all the way back. You wanna have that 20 mil. So around about there. Okay, we are ready for insulation. Oh my God. Sun's shining and this is my insulation. This is uh, Pink Bats, which is like the most common brand here in New Zealand. And it's R2.2 70 mm wall insulation. In order to maintain our air gap, we need the thinner insulation. And it was harder to get because I guess this, people don't do this often. I don't know. And I'm not a great fan of glass wall insulation. You know, clearly I have to wear my mask and, and try and, I don't know, open the windows and keep ventilation up. But then obviously once the plasterboard's on, it's not as much of an issue. But the benefit of glass wall is that you can get a higher R value for a thinner insulation. Because of that and availability, I'm using glass wall insulation. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right, this is where things get slightly more interesting. We're gonna put more insulation on. But in order to do that, we need to get some timber. We need to maybe cut some strips of building wrap as well. And it's gonna create another layer. Let's go inside and um, I'll explain. So with this base layer, we're pretty much caught up to the minimum building standards here in New Zealand. R2 is what you need in the walls. So up until I put those horizontal battens, this is a standard exterior wall insulation process. It's in Standards New Zealand, I'll, I'll put some links below to the files that you can find. I'm not just making this up. The second layer of insulation that I'm going to add is R1.2. So we're getting up to 3.4. Even if you take off a little bit for the imperfections of the system, like the internal corners of the room aren't particularly insulated, you know, we're still R3. We're well above the minimum, that's for sure. All sealed up. You don't have to be a building expert to realize that I did a rough job of that. <laughs> a little bit trigger happy with the expanding foam. Now we have that wall insulated and I'm going to put another 50 mil layer of insulation over the top. That's what all that paper's for. To separate the timber from the new insulation. I, I probably don't need it. I, I just thought, you know, if I'm separating the timber and the insulation on the inside, might as well do it on the outside. This product I'm using here is called Stud Saver, and it's kind of in the name. It basically means you don't have to put extra timber in the corner simply to support plasterboard. But it also helps us in this situation where it allows us to get an extra layer of insulation over that timber. Those studs are getting cold, potentially moist air from the outside, and they can track that temperature decrease through to the plasterboard. So rather than that happening, we're going to put insulation over it. So the plasterboard isn't touching a cold surface or it's, it's slowing down that thermal bridge basically. Something Jess and I say all the time when we're talking about renovating the house is we're not trying to make the best house, we're trying to make this house the best version of itself. This wasn't a house designed to have insulation in the walls. With a combination of the standard New Zealand guidelines and some ideas that I've been researching, I'll come up with this system, R3. And my external walls on an old 1962 house. I think that's pretty good. So yeah, what do you think of that style of insulation on the exterior wall? What would you do? Um, type of insulation? System? I'm very curious to hear more. One of the things I like most about this channel is it's a great crowdsourcing tool for you, the viewer, and for myself as well. I learn a lot in the comments section, especially on topics like this. Jess, I mentioned that we got building consent finally. Uh, I know. Exciting, huh? So exciting. Um, I mean, actually, to be fair, that happened fairly quickly. It's been the material shortages which have been the most frustrating. That is what added to my struggle with the insulation. Trying to find the right insulation and then seeing if it's available was a whole was a whole thing. One thing I want to look into is in America, do you have a different R system? Because I've seen videos where people have R15 walls. No, someone said something like R80 the other day. I was like, but that's more than 10 times yeah. what we're talking about. Surely not. Because like, that would be, how would you even fit it in the ceiling space? That's like dimensionally it impossible. must be a different way of measuring. Those PIR insulation panels, apparently you can get a very high R value with a 
relatively small dimension so I don't know all these things to learn that's what we're trying to do here but we're limited by what's actually available yeah. there's another thing in those comments is a lot of people were suggesting was it rock rock wall rock rock wall rock wall it's not even available here no we do have limitations because we're at the bottom of the world and it's hard to get things here among other reasons but we get good fruit yeah well my parents are coming to stay with us, so I'm trying to make a slow cooker of balsamic beef and bake a cake. And I think I've actually overcommitted myself. But I'm in too deep, so <laughs> I have to keep cooking. Yeah, yeah. Map it out to see if it works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to take a while to pull it. Kind of works. <laughs> What do you think, Patrick? It looks great. Yeah. It's a soundproof room. You won't hear anything outside now. And what are you going to use to insulate your ceiling, Scott? Good question. I'm leaning towards polyester. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. And who are you going to use to build your website? Well, I'm glad you asked. Yes, indeed. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence and run your business. So before we started advertising for Squarespace, Jess and I used them to set up scottbrowncarpentry.com. It was great because their easy to use tools made the website building simple. We don't have HTML skills, we don't know coding. It wasn't necessary with Squarespace. If you run a business that sell a product, you can sell just about anything using their e-commerce tools. If you want to make videos to promote your business, but you don't have the video capabilities, Squarespace help out with their video building platform and of course Squarespace have portfolios and galleries to showcase your business and make it look pretty but don't take my word for it Squarespace also have a free trial so you have nothing to lose and then once you're ready to launch your website head to squarespace.com forward slash Scott Brown Carpentry to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain so cheers to Squarespace for paying for all that insulation Hi Jess. Hi. How's it going? Yeah. Enjoy the beach? So rather than hang out at our house, Jess and Jess's parents and myself came over here to Golden Bay, which we're kind of like on the northernmost tip of the South Island, I believe. So that's New Zealand. We are we're way up here. And yesterday we went out to a beach that was way out here at the start of the spit here. And that, that place was amazing. It looked like the end of the world or something. Or something out of Jurassic Park. The next stop from there is like Australia. So yeah, Farariki Beach it's called. Very highly recommended. It's amazing out there if you're ever in the top of the South Island. A um, couple more things about this wall. Uh, one thing that might come up in the comments section is a vapour barrier. The official brand's guidelines in New Zealand is that you don't need a vapour barrier. Again, I'll link in the description the PDF document where they do all these house simulations and they simulate humidity and, and cold and, and try and work out whether or not you need a vapour barrier and the conclusion was that they don't. And I've actually been watching a lot of Matt Rizzinger videos. I've been learning a lot from his videos and he has talked about how he's worked on houses that were like 10 years old and they've had these vapour barriers. They've taken the plasterboard off and they've found mould all on the back of the plasterboard because I guess moisture is getting trapped right behind that plasterboard and between the vapour barrier because it wasn't necessary. So I'm keen to learn more about this stuff and this is only the first exterior wall that we've worked on on our house. And as we work our way around the house, maybe the system will evolve. Maybe I'll get some stuff from you guys. And if you guys can point me in the right direction, maybe I'll learn some more stuff from someone else as well. So I'm open to learning more on this. Um, thanks for watching this exciting episode. I'll catch you in the next one. Here's some more beautiful shots of Golden Bay.